Today we're going to be looking at the use of an ATEM Mini Pro ISO and the Extreme Mini ISO using them for YouTube videos. YouTube, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. Here on this channel, I do a lot of food and product reviews. So if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, today we're looking at the Mini Pro ISO and the Extreme ISO and how these can help you as a creator make YouTube videos faster, simpler, just an ease to your workload. So as you can see for this video, I have the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Literally within two weeks of purchasing this device, the extreme version came out. Now granted, it's like $400 more, and we'll talk a little more between the two differences, but this is the one that I'm gonna actually be using here in this video. So if you're not familiar with it, what an A10 Mini is, it is a live broadcast switcher, so you can switch between cameras in a live feed. These are super popular among streamers, but I'm gonna show you how it helps with just creating YouTube videos. I personally don't stream, at least not yet, maybe sometime in the future. So that is a, the function that I use this for. And if so if you're looking for more info on streaming with this device, there's plenty of videos out there. I'm just gonna be showing you how, if you create YouTube videos, well, this device could be super powerful for you. So the reason I got the A10 Mini uh, was because I was shooting with multiple cameras. At the time I was shooting with three cameras and my main camera had this little monitor on it. So I could monitor my feed from that camera, but the other two cameras, my camera over here, and I had an above camera, which is now back there. So we can, you can see everything that's going on. You know, the camera over there, you know, I could just have the little flip screen out. It was, it was hard to tell, you know, are things in focus? Cause it's a small screen. The one above me, the way that camera is mounted, the, I couldn't look up and see the, the, the flip screen. I would literally have to get up and stand up and look at the monitor to see. So I wanted a different solution. I want to be able to have a monitor in front of me with all my camera feeds. So I started watching YouTube videos and trying to figure out how could I make that possible? And I, the A10 mini started popping up. So I started looking into these and they have different models. So just know that when you go into it, which model is gonna be right for you. If you're looking at it for what I'm using it for, you're gonna to wanna to get an ISO version. So they have five different of the minis right now. So they have the A10 mini, the A10 mini pro, the A10 mini pro ISO, the A10 mini extreme and the A10 mini extreme ISO. So we're just gonna be looking at the ISOs. The difference between the ISOs and the other one is the ISOs record. So I have four cameras going on right now. I have camera one, camera two, camera three is down here, and then camera four is above me. So not only is it recording a, a program file that will go right into DaVinci Resolve. So when I'm done shooting, I just unhook my SSD, plug it into my computer, double click on the DaVinci Resolve file, and it takes me right into DaVinci Resolve with a multicam work clip going already. Super simple. It's also recording, it's gonna have separate files for each of the cameras. So if you wanna go in and do something else, just know that you're gonna have every camera from the time I hit record to the time I stop, it's recording each feed on every camera. So that's why I went with the, the ISO version. And I'm gonna to explain to you a little more on how this makes my workflow so much easier. Prior to this, having this device here, Again, I didn't have this monitor in front of me, so I couldn't keep track of everything. I would have, so if I didn't have this device, I have my four cameras and I have my H6 uh, zoom down here, which records from my microphone. So I would have five SD cards that I would have to take out of my cameras, one at a time, put into my laptop, transfer those files. So when I would stop recording a video, I'd have to go, you know, turn off every camera, take out the SD cards and some of these cameras, I think there's only two of them that I could actually get to while it's on the tripod. I have three Canon RPs back here and just like my SL2 up there, the card slot is on the bottom. So two of them I can get to while they're on the tripod. The other two, I have to actually move the camera from the tripod to get the SD cards. So that takes a little time. Take each of those cards out. Like I said, put them into my computer, transfer those files to my computer. So after I have them all transferred to my computer, then go into DaVinci Resolve, open that up and start a new project. Take all those files, you know, from the five different sources, 
put those into DaVinci Resolve, sync them, you know, start a work, uh, a multi-cam clip. So from the time I'd stop recording to do all that before I could and get it into the computer and where I have that multi-cam clip made and I'm ready to start editing, 10 minutes about it would take me. Where now with this, it's recording. I don't have to hit record on each of my cameras. I just have to turn my cameras on. I just hit record on the button here and it starts recording all the feeds. When I'm done, I hit stop. I unplug my SSD from the A10 mini, plug it into my computer, double click on the DaVinci Resolve project that this device makes for me, opens up DaVinci Resolve, I'm ready to start editing. So instead of 10 minutes before, within 30 seconds, I'm already editing this video. So that's one of the great features is, especially if you use DaVinci Resolve, it's gonna create that project for you, a multicam project for you. Now, if you're using a different program, like I said, it's recording all the files, so you can still transfer that and use this device if you're using you know, Adobe or Final Cut. I use DaVinci Resolve super quick. Like I said, within 30 seconds of me stopping recording the video, I'm already starting my edit. So one of the big differences between this model and the Extreme ISO model is this one, I can have four inputs. So I can either have four cameras going or I can do three cameras and have my laptop plugged into here where I can bring up my laptop screen and you can see that. The Extreme model is gonna have eight inputs back there. So you can have eight cameras or seven cameras and your laptop. And again, the difference in price is $8.95 for this version here, $12.95 for the extreme version. So it depends on how many cameras you have. And there's some other features, especially if you're streaming, you know, and there's a lot of great videos out there that'll go into all the other features. I just use this for creating uh, YouTube videos. So there's a lot of different things I could still do even on this one, you know, with the downstream key, with the... Uh, green screen effects, a lot of things you could do on here. There's a lot of great videos out there if you wanna look up those. I'm just showing you how it can make your workflow faster for YouTube videos. Here's a little trick for you. Like I said, I have four cameras. So I have my four cameras set up, but I also have my computer to where sometimes in my videos, maybe I don't need all four cameras and I wanna bring up my laptop, or maybe I wanna use my four cameras, but I also wanna use my laptop. All you gotta do is unplug one of the cameras. So recording this video, I'm gonna use, say my close-up camera. It's still recording this feed up till this point. So I'm now gonna unplug that one, which is, I just wanna make sure I unplug the right one, which is camera three. So I'm just gonna unplug three, and I have an HDMI cord here from my computer, plug that into the same slot, and now, when I bring up camera three, as you see, it's my computer screen, which there's nothing on it right now. So I could bring up my computer and you know whatever I'm looking at on my computer, on a website or anything, I could have that in the video too. Because at this point, I don't need that other camera going. When I'm done using my camera stuff, I would just go ahead and unplug that. And get that other camera back in there. And all you gotta do is when you're editing it, cut out that portion. So people won't even see, your viewers won't even see that you're you know, unplugging one camera, plugging the other one. And what, it took a matter of seconds for me to unplug one HDMI cord, plug the other one in, bring up my laptop, show you whatever I need to show on that laptop screen, and then just switch it back. So you can use four cameras and a laptop if you just wanna switch the cords in and out, or if you're just gonna use four cameras, you don't need to use your laptop, you could use stills too. So say I have a still right now on, you know, I can take a, a screenshot of my computer screen and I can save it to the media player on here. So then I just hit the still button and it brings up that still that I have. I go back to my media player or go back to camera one, I mean. So the way I, and here's another thing, like when people are live streaming with these, they can switch between cameras that they're recording on just by pushing these buttons here. So I'm switching between the cameras and it's gonna record that into my multi-cam clip. So when I go to edit, those cuts are already gonna be in between those cuts. Typically when I film a video, I keep it on camera one. I record everything on this camera, finish the video, 
take it in, you know, open up that DaVinci Resolve project and start doing the multicam cuts. So it brings up a multicam clip and then everything's on camera one and then I can go and make my cuts and switch to the different cameras in my edit. So when you're shooting the video, you're not seeing me constantly, you know, okay, I'm gonna cut here. Oh, if I'm taking, you know, cause I do food and product reviews. I'm taking a drink, I'm gonna cut to this camera. I'm not touching this. I do all those cuts in post because it creates a multicam clip. Occasionally, the most, most of the time, if you see me touching this, messing around with it is because I'm going here as you can, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see my screen a little better. Okay, so you can see my screen. I got my microphone in the way here. So let me move this out of the way a little bit so you can see it a little better. So typically my videos, what I'll do is I may, just because sometimes it's hard to see. So here's my four cameras down here, camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. You have a preview window and a program. I don't do anything with the, the preview window. So the program is what's actually being recorded, but I can blow up any of these four to full screen. So let's say I'm shooting and I wanna see camera one a little better. Yes, it's here, but I wanna see it better. So I just, you have your four cameras over here. I just push camera one. Now it's on full screen there. Say I wanted to see camera two full screen or camera three or camera four. Then I can go back to multi view. So that's typically in my videos. If you ever see me reaching for the A10 mini, it's just because I want to see it closer up. You know, maybe I'm showing the product, a product in front of me and I can't really see that overhead camera. So I, I may switch to, you know, the overhead camera in here just so I could see the product a little more. That's the only time I'm really reaching for the, the device in front of me. One other great feature of this is you don't have to worry about your S. Let me move my microphone back over here. You don't have to worry about your SD cards in your cameras. Like I said, you don't have to, you're just powering your cameras on. You don't have to hit the record button on the cameras. This device is recording the feeds from there. You still need SD cards in your cameras because they're gonna not wanna, you know, they're gonna put on the screen, no SD card. So you need to put an SD card in the cameras. You just don't need to use them. You can, if you're shooting a really important video that it's only gonna take, you can only have one take to get it. I would hit record on those and have the SSD going too, just as a backup, but you don't need to. So you don't have to worry about your SD cards ever filling up in your cameras and shutting off. I mean, that's that was a problem I used to have in my videos is I didn't realize how full the cards were. You'd be shooting the video. You wouldn't even realize a camera start, stopped recording because I didn't have monitors for all the cameras. And then you'd go to put the SD cards in the, the computer and you realize, oh, the camera stopped. Where now everything is being recorded to an SSD and you have right here on the screen, okay, my microphone is in the way, shows you how much this little, shows you how much space is left on, my, on your S, SSD. So I have 431 gigabytes and it even gives you a time, you know, looks like I have three hours and 55 minutes worth of video recording that I could do before that's full. I would just keep an eye on that. I just shot a video. I didn't even realize I, cause I typically am just paying attention to my cameras up here, my feeds. I wasn't paying attention to that it was full. So the last video I got halfway through and it filled up and stopped recording. And I didn't realize it till I was done. And I looked down to hit stop recording. I realized it was already off. So just keep an eye on that. You know, when you start, Turn on your pro, your, when you turn on your ATM, just look at it, see how much space is left on your, your SSD. Make sure you have enough to finish off that video. It's happened to me, like I said in the last video, it won't happen again, because now I know to keep an eye on that to make sure my SSD isn't full. And again, there's a lot more functions you can do, you know, picture in picture, you could do your, your fading to black. You can do a lot of things right here with the device and not have to do it in, you know, your editing software. Like I said, I just prefer to do it in editing software so I don't have to constantly be touching this through the video. You know, there's a lot of great videos out there that you can see more, more features that you can do with this device if you need to. And one other thing is, so I have audio going from my, um, my Rode mic up here into my H6 Zoom. It will also record, have audio, separate audio files for each of your cameras, even though the camera audio is really bad, I never use it. But if you had say like, um, let's say I 
had my little microphone on one of my cameras, it would get that audio too. So you'd have different audio files. And if I had another one of these, I have two inputs. So not only does it record the audios from my cameras, as you see over here on my screen, so I have my four camera audios that I can record. I have my mic, this is my main mic that I record on. I could have a second mic. So if I had you know, another mic up here, I could record and have two mics being recorded in here. If that's something, you know, say you're doing like a podcast or a video with two people and you want two mics, you can use that on here. You will record both of those mics. So like I said, I originally got this because I just wanted a multi-cam image on a screen. And then the more I started looking at it, I realized, wow, this is gonna save me some time and it's gonna make my edits so much faster. Like I said, with, by the time I hit stop record, plug that in, I'm editing within 30 seconds. Before it'd be, you know, again, take the SDs out, transfer them. And it, it was just a process. Yes, you say it's only 10 minutes, but there'd be times where we'd be like, okay, I'd put it off. And there was videos that I've shot that I've never gone and edited because I just kind of put it off as, because it's a process and I would just, okay, I'm just gonna take a break for a little bit. And then that break would turn into a day or two days or three days or a couple of weeks. And then it just got to the point where it's like, okay, it's too late to even do that video anymore. Now it's immediately when I'm done shooting, I plug it in and I do my edit. And I'm typically, if it's not too difficult of video, I could have my video almost done and edited in the time that before I'd even start the other one. You know, I can unplug this, edit my video in say 10, 15 minutes and basically be done before I'd even start the other old way of editing my videos. So there you go, the A10 Mini Pro ISO or the Extreme ISO. Again, this version here, 895, you can attach up to four cameras to it, where the Extreme, we're looking at 1295 and you can put eight cameras. So it depends on how many cameras you have, what your workflow is, is it worth the price? It depends, I would say, on how many videos you do. Um, I'm shooting, you know, say four a week at least, usually. And, you know, so there's 40 minutes of time it saved me a week over the course of a whole year. The 895 becomes, okay, it makes it a little more worth it. If you're just shooting a video every once in a while, maybe you don't really need this. Again, like I said, it just depends on your workflow. For me, I love it. It makes things so simple. I love having everything right here on the screen in front of me. I can monitor my audio, my SSD, my, my cameras, my stills. I can attach, bring in my laptop if I want. It makes things so simple. So there you go, the A10 Mini Pro ISO and the A10 Mini Pro Extreme ISO. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a new video. I'll see you guys next time. And I guess one other thing I would say, since I have four cameras and a laptop, and I just switched the cables out, you know, when I want to use the laptop, you honestly could do this with as many cameras as you want. You know, let's say I had eight cameras set up. Again, you could only have four plugged in at a time, but you know, if I'm just using one camera for a few shots and then, okay, I don't need to use that camera, you could just switch out the cables. Just saying, that's an option if you have multiple cameras where you're like, ooh, I have five cameras. I don't really want to spend the money on $12.95 for the extreme. Could I get away with this one? Yeah, you just unplug and plug the other camera in when you're using one when you're not. So there's workarounds. I'll see you guys next time.